So today we're going to talk about Don Quixote, which is a great novel written by the Castilian writer Miguel de Cervantes. The ingenious gentleman Don Quixote of La Mancha has two parts, the first of which was published in 1605 and the second in 1615. Don Quixote is probably the most challenging novel I have reviewed so far on my channel. I know that a lot of readers are intimidated by it, so today I'm going to try to convince you that you should put any prejudices you may have aside and tackle one of the most important and complex books ever written. To make things easier, I am going to talk about its author, Miguel de Cervantes, before going into the novel itself. Well, we actually do not know that much about Cervantes' life, but there are a few things we do know and that I think might be illuminating when we read his masterpiece. Now, Miguel de Cervantes was born in the city of Alcalá de Henares near Madrid, probably in 1547. We don't know this for sure, but his father's and probably his mother's family too were new Christians of Jewish origin, probably. In the Iberian Peninsula, new Christians were people of either Muslim or Jewish origin who had converted into Christianity. Remember that most of Iberia had been ruled by Muslims from 1711 until the fall of the last Muslim kingdom, Granada, in 1492. In the newly created Christian kingdoms of Castile, Aragon, Portugal, etc., many people had to convert to Christianity, and it seems like Cervantes' family were probably no exception, although little about this is known for sure. Actually, no, not much is known about Cervantes' real uh, background or early life, in fact. Uh, what we do know is that Miguel de Cervantes was a man of action. He was a soldier who participated in the famous Battle of Lepanto, which was a naval battle near Greece between a coalition of Catholic Christian states known as the Holy League and the Ottoman Empire, and that battle took place on October 7th, 1571. Now, Cervantes was enormously proud to have fought in that battle won by the Holy League by his side, even though it cost him to lose the movement of his left hand. On his way back to Spain, the ship he was on was captured by Ottoman Corsairs and Cervantes became a prisoner in Algiers, where he stayed for five years before being able to go back to his country. I am highlighting all this uh, not only because these are the best known episodes in Cervantes' life, but also because all these experiences are relevant to Don Quixote. If you do not know much about Spanish history or Cervantes' own involvement in the Muslim world, as it were, you might find some of the references in Don Quixote baffling. So let's go now into the novel itself. The first thing I feel you need to know about Don Quixote is that it was a hugely popular novel upon publication and it was swiftly translated into other languages. I think the first English translation came out only about seven years after the original publication of part one in Spanish, which is remarkable for the early 17th century. Part 2 came out 10 years after Part 1, and it was also a huge success. Don Quixote is a complex novel, but it is not a difficult book to read at all. If it seems difficult for us now, it is only because of its language and its intimidating size. The language used in the 17th century is quite different from the language we use now, of course, and that is why there are so many translations that use simpler or more contemporary language, and also abridged editions. I first read Don Quixote as a high school student, and the assigned version I had to read was an abridged edition. Now, abridged editions have the advantage of being more accessible. If you read one, you would get the story, the plot, but you would miss out on almost everything else that makes this novel so great. One of the best things about this novel is how it brings the past to us in such a clear way. This novel speaks to me in ways that a lot of contemporary fiction doesn't. Whenever I read Don Quixote, I feel like Cervantes is talking about our world now. It's talking about my world. Everything is so relevant. 400 years later, Cervantes continues to speak to us. Don Quixote deals with questions that um, will always be relevant to people, justice, truth, but not as abstract concepts, but as part of our daily lives, and Cervantes tackles all of that through the characters of Quixote and Sancho Panza. 
through the many conversations uh, they have and also their interactions with the other characters they meet along the way. Now, the absolute best element of Don Quixote to me is the ongoing dialogue between the two main characters. Don Quixote is a well-read man, what we now would probably call an intellectual, whereas his companion Sancho is illiterate. These two characters discuss everything that is important to everyone, even to us now. And there is a lot of humor in those dialogues. Don Quixote has passages that are actually loud and funny. Don Quixote himself is a fascinating character because he's simultaneously extremely intelligent and also totally nuts. His madness contrasts with his logic and the brilliant way in which he expresses his ideas, which is what enthralls the much simpler Sancho. Now, I don't want to assume that you know the story, so I'm going to talk a little bit about it, but without spoiling anything. Alonso Quijano is a man from La Mancha, which is a rural region of Spain. He reads a lot of chivalric uh, literature, so tales about knights, and he decides to become a knight himself and go by the name of Don Quixote. Only that we are no longer in medieval Europe, so there aren't any knights around anymore. He interprets reality, everything that happens to him on his expeditions as part of his adventures as a knight. But we, the readers, and all the other characters in the novel see what really happens. But Don Quixote sees it through the lenses of being a knight. Sancho, on the other hand, is a poor peasant who is the voice of sanity and common sense in the novel, but he still lets Don Quixote convince him to become his squire. Don Quixote promises Sancho an island if he helps him in his adventures. Poor Sancho doesn't even know what an island is, but likes the sound of it, so he joins Don Quixote in his uh, chivalric expeditions. Now, another fascinating thing about this novel is how in its third section, which happens in part two, the main characters become aware that the first two sections of the novel exist and that everything that has happened to them up to that point is in a book and people have actually read about it. Now, there are 10 years, as I said, between the publication of part one and part two, but in the narrative, in narrative time, part two begins only about a month after the end of part one. Now, in that third section, the characters meet readers of the book, and that is so fascinating, so original, so innovative, even for 21st century readers. That is not something that we are used to seeing in literature. Now, imagine Emma Bovary, for example, meeting someone who has read her story and knows about her lovers. How would that change her and the course of the story? Well, in Don Quixote, the fact that Quixote and Sancho meet some of their readers makes an impact on them because they both want to alter the content of future sections of their story. Both Quixote and Sancho become aware of their existence as literary characters. We can also read Don Quixote as a parody of a chivalric literature and one of the key elements of uh, those kind of stories is romance. In Don Quixote, uh, Quixote has a lady whom he's never actually met. He actually makes her up and calls her Dulcinea del Toboso. I mean, there is a girl he'll eventually meet in part two, but she ain't no lady. In no way does she correspond to the idealized image Quixote has um, conjured up in his mind. Don Quixote is uh, considered the best modern novel in Western literature. It is a novel that most readers have heard about, but not that many have actually read. And I think that everyone who loves literature and cares about how uh, narratives are constructed and the role readers play should read Don Quixote. Remember that the main character is also a reader and reading changes his life. At least, I think that should speak to people who love reading. But of course, this is just my opinion. Now I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Juan and I post a new book review every Saturday. The best way not to miss any of my reviews is for you to subscribe and turn on the notifications bell. This is all from me for now. I hope that you are all doing very well and I hope to see you again very soon for another book review. Bye for now.